This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Whether you're joining us live or you're joining us on the recording, we are so glad to have you here tonight for our first installment of the Summer of Art. And first of all, I would just like to say that none of this would be possible without the Healthy Grant, the Healthy Voices Grant, in partnership with the Community Foundation of New Jersey and Janssen Pharmaceuticals. So we want to give a big thank you to them. And there's no point in me talking. We have so much to do tonight, Hannah. So Hannah Garrison is our awesome art instructor and she's going to guide us through this whole process and believe me i asked on the front end since it's van gogh inspired do i have to be the level that van gogh was and i was promised absolutely not and i have witnesses so hannah thank you thank you so much and one of the things i'll ask you to do is just turn your webcam off real quick so we can make hannah really big and if you didn't hear my announcement if you click at the top and go to either active camera or who's talking you'll be able to see her hannah take it away perfect thank you alexa for that lovely introduction and uh, yes you're absolutely right um, you do not have to be a seasoned artist to enjoy creating a van gogh a vincent van gogh inspired picture. This is a drawing. We won't be painting it. And we are going to have a lot of scribbles. There's going to be scribbles left and right. And I'm going to walk you through every portion of this picture. Um, as you, uh, as Alexa mentioned earlier, just sort of think about what kind of colors you'd like to use. Because of course, you can absolutely follow along exactly to the T and use all of these colors here that you see in the original picture, but you don't have to do that. Um, so just think about what other colors you'd like to use. Take a good look at your set of markers um, and just sort of think about what you'd like to do. Um, so, oh, yay, I see some more joiners. Hi, Tori. Good seeing you. Got distracted there, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so I have in front of me, of course, my markers, but I also have my paper as well. So go ahead and take that paper out if you would like. Um, I mentioned earlier that if you would like to, um, if you would like to use painter's tape, like the blue painter's tape, or perhaps even the green tape, the green painter's tape, to tape it down onto your um, your drawing surface, go ahead and take the time to do that now. You can see that I did not do that with this one. It's just all the way up to the edge of the paper. Um, so it's not required. You definitely don't have to. Um, and I guess I should introduce who I am, actually. My name is Hannah Garrison, and I've been teaching um, arts or the arts to um, people, really, really a lot of different kinds of people for about um, six years now. But I've been teaching with uh, teaching people who are undergoing life altering health illnesses for about three years now. I myself have multiple sclerosis. And so um, and art has been my saving grace. It really was the thing that helped to pull me out of these deep, dark depths of my mind and of my illness. And so what I hope to do is pass that on to really anybody else who might need the help as well. Um, so if there's any questions you'd like to ask, not just about the picture, but you know, to me as well, please feel free to ask that later as well. Um, what else? I think that's it. I think we can get started. Um, I do want to uh, let you know that we will get a chance to practice our vase a little bit. So I feel like, at least for me, I feel like this is probably going to be the most challenging portion. Um, but it may not be challenging. It's up to you. So for that, for that practice por portion, um, we will be able to use another sheet of paper. So please just uh, feel free to just rip out another piece of paper. Um, you can practice as many times as you would like, but I probably won't give you guys too much time because I don't want anybody to just focus on it too much. Um, it's not really, in my opinion, the, the biggest portion of, of the, the drawing. Um, let's see, I was gonna say something else, but I completely forgot. My memory is terrible, you guys, okay? So you might hear me repeating myself again. Um, it just comes with MS, okay? Um, so 
Oh, yes. Okay, here's what I wanted to mention. Some of you all have asked to um, receive some mobility aids. Well, I'm sorry, adaptive writing aids. And so you should have gotten some of these. Um, some of them may be blue. I have red ones in front of me. The blue ones, if you, you should have gotten some blue ones, but the blue ones are going to be slightly larger. And I want to show you how to put them in there because once you put them in there, it's really easy but taking them out might be a little bit of a challenge. So I'd like to show you how I, how I use these. Um, they're, they're made of foam, so I'm hoping that they, are, that they will work well for, for you guys if you ask to get some of these. Um, believe it or not, um, there weren't very many options for the things that we're using for markers. There weren't very many options for markers. Um, so I had to use what I could find, really. And so these popped up for as a larger mobility aids that, that we could use. I keep saying mobility aids. I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> um, so like I mentioned, putting them in is really easy, but taking them out can be a little bit of, bit of a challenge. So let me show you what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of wiggle them in there. Take your time with, there, with that. I'm going to wiggle them in there as best as I can. I don't want to put them in too far. Can you guys see that? Um, because I still want to be able to grasp them in order to take them out. Now, you can't really just pull them out. Um, it helps if you twist them out. Twist them out, and then they're easy at that point. So if you wanted to practice just once or twice, I don't want you to, uh, I don't want your hands to tire too much just from practicing. So just a few times, put it in a little bit, pull it out just a bit. And just so you can see how I'm using them, I will use them for a few colors as well. Um, I recommend for you to put a few of the important colors and I will mention um, the colors that we'll be using up next so that you kind of know what we'll, what we'll be using. So I'll mention the colors we'll be, I'll be using on my picture so that you can get those ready. So kind of like that. Now I am going to put it a little bit further in because I feel like that would be a little bit helpful, help, more helpful for my hand. Um, and then I'll just kind of leave it alone for now. So go ahead and do that. Now, I did promise that we will be um, practicing our vase first. So um, just from my own um, time spent trying to um, perfect and sort of like practice how to draw, really, um, I know that it can be very easy to hyper-focus on one certain thing. So in order to minimize that, we'll probably just get um, maybe a minute or two of practicing the vase. Honestly, you can grab any color you'd like to practice. So here's a little drawing lesson, very short drawing lesson. Um, this is actually going to be the very first thing that we draw to, so just so you know. And I'm going to be using a light color. Um, I, I like to do this a lot, actually. Um, the peach color is going to be the lightest color here. Um, but, of course, whatever color makes you feel comfortable, you can use. But I'm going to be using peach. Um, the, any kind of light color is actually very easy to go back on top of and cover. So you can see here that this isn't peach color. This is like a brown color. So I just went and I, later on, um, not in the beginning, but later on, I practiced, or I just drew the uh, brown color on top of my peach. So for now, this vase is going to be floating in the middle of the page. And like I said, this is just practice right now, so you can draw it on your practice sheet anywhere you want. I'm going to start off with the top. This is going to be this section here. I'm now going to go down at an angle, down at an angle. Now it's not even, I want you guys to see that, it's not even. None of this is gonna be even, that's not the point. Um, then it's going to go down here. For my vase, it came to a point here, but that wasn't on purpose, I promise that wasn't on purpose. It's really hard to, uh, <laughs> it's really hard to create perfectly symmetrical anything, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Down, down, 
dun dun down, dun dun down, and then connect the two for the bottom. Now I'm going to practice again, okay? As you can see, still not symmetrical, but like I said, that's not really the point. So let's just put another floating vase right next to it. Got the top, gonna go down at an angle, gonna go out at an angle. See, it's always one side that's never, never quite right. And then it's gonna go in again at an angle. And then I'm gonna close it. I'll practice again. And I would encourage you guys to try to go a little bit faster this time. To the side, at an angle, out at an angle, then go in at an angle, then close it. Please do it as many times as you'd like. Try to make it a little bit big. Try it out like that. I guess it's a little bit more diamond shaped than anything. I feel like fourth time's the charm. And just so you guys know, um, you can see here that I put pink stripes. This is actually that same peach color. Um, peach colored stripes in the middle. And I want you to know that I just put stripes because I really couldn't think of anything else. And art doesn't have to be complicated. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, Alexa asked what color am I practicing with, with everyone. This is peach. So it's, it doesn't, it's not labeled peach, but it's the one that looks like it. Now there are um, several lighter colors in there, so you can actually feel free to use any one of those, to, especially to practice too. You can use any of them. Um, I would like to also explain while you guys are practicing, just for another few seconds. Um, actually, there's a reason why I chose to use Crayola colors. Um, Crayola is actually, I think, a pretty good brand. Um, people don't really think of Crayola as like a, a, an, an artist's choice of um, tools and supplies, but I feel like they are actually really good learning tools too. Um, and I wanted to just sort of dispel the idea that in order to do art, especially when you're first starting out and you, you have financial things on your mind, um, Crayola is very cheap and so are lots of other um, projects, or so are lots of other um, uh, tools that you can use as well. So you definitely don't have to go out and buy expensive supplies in order to get started and, and make art, really. It's all about the practice. It's all about the doing. Um, and that idea right there helps me to just sort of um, get this healthier view about art and healthier view about living as well. I just wanted to throw that out there, that's why. So I guess I can get started now, I think. So I have this little vase right here and it's gonna look like it's floating. I wanna think about where my flowers are gonna be situated. If you take your hand and just sort of like cup it around this general area, um, this is basically where my flowers are gonna be. It's not gonna be perfect and exactly right there, but just about that area. So, actually I need a new page, let me get a new page. So it was about, about like this, if you, uh, hold your, your hand out wide a little bit in this area. So that means the vase is gonna be somewhere around here. Um, I'm gonna have plenty of space on the bottom here um, for, the, for the table, some space on the side for the table as well. But the most important part is to have plenty of space um, right here for the flowers. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, please keep in mind that you do have plenty of paper, so feel free to, um, especially in the beginning, please feel free uh, to start over again if you'd like, but you don't have to. Um, again, lots of space here, so let me just put my line here. Gonna make that. Again, I'm gonna go kind of fast and complete it. Um, 
if you want to if you want to put the stripes in right now you certainly can but you don't have to you can think about what you want to put in the middle um, because like I said earlier the only reason I put stripes is because I couldn't think of anything else so it just sort of fits it just fit well um, <laughs> but if you have a certain color you want to use anything any other um, pattern you want to use later you can certainly do that as well so um, I guess I guess I can go ahead and put it in now we'll just put the stripes in there so let's go ahead and do that we'll put the stripes in and we will leave them be for now All right. Thank you guys. If you just popped in, thank you guys for being here. We, um, just to get you caught up a little bit, we just did the vase after practicing for a little bit. Just practiced a couple times on a spare sheet of paper. Um, and then we've got a floating vase right now in the middle of our paper. So the next thing we'll create is actually going to be um, the flowers. So I'm really excited about this part. Let me show you kind of side by side now what they look like. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you definitely don't need to um, do the same colors that I'm doing. Um, you can do any color you want, really. I'm going to break down how to create a flower um, little by little, and then I'm not even going to count how many flowers I have in the middle of the vase. Um, I feel like, um, again, just with the, the same thing as, uh, I guess, hyper-concentrating on the shape of the vase and how to draw the vase, the same thing can happen to um, the flowers, too. So um, I am going to start with yellow, and it's going to be the lightest yellow that I have. So, I have to find mine. I always tell myself I'm going to clean my desk and my space. doesn't always happen. <laughs> or like, I will clean it and literally the next day I have to create a project and it just gets messy again. Okay, so I'm going to get the lightest um, yellow that I have. Now, if you are doing a different color, then do the lightest color within that family of colors. So if, say, for example, you're going to do blue, get the lightest blue you can find. Or if you're going to do pink, then I would suggest perhaps doing um, the, the, that same peach color that you used. So the lightest color in that family of colors. All right, so I'm even going to draw um, my the center of my sunflowers using the, um, the, the lightest color. So for me, that lemon yellow. I'm gonna draw the center, and then it's gonna get really messy for right now, but that's just the nature of what we're doing. Uh, we're not looking for perfection here, okay? Um, I also forgot to mention that we're gonna do a lot of scribbling too. That's the whole point, we're gonna scribble. And that's what I find most fun about using markers because we can scribble and we can make it more sophisticated without having to be a professional artist for sure. Um, so um, you can see my, my flower right here. This is my biggest flower. Um, I'm gonna start with my biggest flower. It's somewhere around here. So just draw a circle, just a circle. What we're going to do is do one flower at a time by drawing the easiest flowers that we can draw for now. I chose to draw it somewhere up here because there's plenty of space for those petals. Now, for the petals, I'm going to do one at a time, but I'm also going to jump sides. So I've got one here, and I'm going to look to the opposite side. I'm going to draw the other one on that side. Um, it's all about making things um, as symmetrical as we can without being perfect. Then I'm going to go to the side here. I'm going to draw one there. And your 
petal shapes don't have to be like that if you don't want them to. Like they can be different, different petal shapes. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. So did that one, then that one, then that one, and then that one. And now I have to uh, fill in some gaps here. Plenty of gaps to fill in. Um, I am going to, ta-da, crisscross my lines. And I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I crisscross my lines all the time because <laughs> I have no patience for um, being exact with things. So I did that one there. I'm going to jump across, crisscross some more lines like that. Jump to the last two spots here. And if you happen to have more gaps after that, then that's okay. You just have more lines to crisscross. That's all. Now I'm going to give you guys another few seconds to do that. All right. Hope that's okay. I don't want to go too fast for you guys. Um, my next flower, I'm going to try to squeeze it in as best as I can. Perhaps it's over here. I feel like putting it over here would probably give me plenty of space to create those petals without overlapping too much for now. Um, you can see I made it oval. It's more of an oval shape right here. And I did that because at least in my head, I don't know if this is true, but at least in my head, I feel like it makes it look, it makes it seem like the flower is on its side a little bit more. Um, so it'd be nice to have a few of them like that where the, the middle is not completely round, it's a little bit more oval shaped. I mean, even if I'm looking at that one, the petals definitely don't indicate the fact that it's on its side um, in a three-quarter view. But, you know, I can dream. It's okay. It's very abstract. So um, I'm going to start again the same way I started before. On one side, I'm going to jump to the other. Then I'm going to start on the right side because that's just where I'm at. Then the left. And then I'm going to start filling in the gaps. So I'll start here. Like so. These will become easier the more you do. And we have plenty of sunflowers to create. Like I said, I'm not going to count any of these sunflowers. I'm just going to create as many as I can create in the space that I have. Because remember, I just kind of fanned out my hand like this. And I'm generally going to stay over here. Um, I just wanted to show you also that when I made this picture here, um, I had a lot of gaps, actually. I had this space here. Couldn't really put anything in this space here. So I just filled it with leaves because of course you're not going to have a bouquet of flowers without having some leaves on there um so we will be scribbling in some green leaves in in those little spaces there so don't feel like you have to fill in every inch or every centimeter with a flower because you don't have to it's all about filling in the gaps um, in any way that we can so i will let you guys just sort of do your own thing for a second, um, kind of make the flowers, and I'm just going to be talking out loud, honestly. <laughs> There's not really much else to say, really. Um, I mentioned already that I'm going to stay within this area, so I'm just going to start talking. Um, I guess I'll squeeze in a flower right here. Um, when I choose spots for flowers, um, I'm choosing really the area in which I can squeeze, or I, can, I can put in the most of a flower. So a good spot is here. Um, I should mention that eventually we'll have to crisscross with other flowers. We'll have to overlap our petals 
it's just going to happen and even maybe even overlap your vase for a little bit. And that's okay. I purposefully tried to crisscross that flower just so you can see. Um, let's see, I have some gaps to fill in, so I am totally crisscrossing lines here. Are there any other questions so far? If you have any questions, please feel free to um, type it in the chat box up there. I would be more than happy to answer any questions. Because if not, I'm just going to keep on talking, okay? So um, I have another big or space Hannah, right here. If it's, if it's hard for them to type, they can unmute too. Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely. Good point, Alexa. Thank you. Now, let's see. Now, I'm going to do one right here. Let's see. Now, this one, this little guy is probably going to go off the page. And that is absolutely okay. I'm going to just sort of decide ahead of time that I actually want that one to have really big petals. And I'm, I'm doing this because I want you guys to see what it looks like with it with the petals crisscrossed some more. So that's what I'm going to do. Ta-da! Big old petals right there. It's definitely going to go off the page. Um, I'm going to jump to the other side again. Try to match the, the size of that petal right there, as best as I can at least. And then once again, start on this side. Now that's like an extra jumbo <laughs> size petal and that's okay. I'm going to match it on the other side and because they are big petals, I'm just going to squeeze another one right there. Or another few, I should say. Always making sure to jump across the middle there. Eventually it's going to get pretty messy. Well, okay, not messy, more like uh, busy. It's going to get very busy. So we will take care of that later. Another thing that's running through my mind is um, I'm just sort of, it always helps to step aside a little bit, perhaps sit up a little bit because sometimes it gets really easy to just lean in a little bit too close to our picture. Um, so just sort of step back a little bit, or sit back, I should say. Um, take a look at it as a whole. Take a look at it. Um, I can see that it's a little skewed. Like mine, I can see like um, I have plenty of space for another flower like right up here. So I'm just going to squeeze one in back here. And I'm going to, well, I tried to do another one of those um, more oval shapes. Now, I just went ahead and did another line or another circle oval right on top of that because, you know, why not? It's all right. It's going to be covered with the brown in a little bit anyway. And then I'm just going to make more petals coming out. Jumping around as needed. And like I said, if you need to add some extra petals, if somehow it's not even anymore, then that's okay, because that's the beauty of nature. It's the beauty of our hands, it's the beauty of our nature, of the nature, and um, just the way flowers are. So they don't have to be perfect, they don't have to be even. And I'm looking at my flowers, and I don't really see too much space, at least not in mine. Um, I don't see too much space for any more. Um, I could probably maybe squeeze in a flower back here, but I'm going to weigh my options. Like, I don't have to squeeze in a flower back here. I could definitely later on fill it in with some, um, some leaves. Um, for anybody else who may have this issue, though, where you have kind of a big space that's not, you know, too much. Um, I can actually make one just for you, actually. I'm going to 
put in a circle there and I'll do my best to keep this like keep this area from disappearing too much because it's very busy at this point um, so that's my circle start at the top once again this one it just I didn't even have to think about it it just naturally came out smaller um, and that works out very well I am just completely going on top of my lines like it's already getting kind of busy but for the most part I got most of the uh, most of the things there so that's okay worked out and then for everything else I can just use um, the leaves as the filler so we'll be able to put that in there now if by chance um, you've um, figured out what you want to do with the vase you can certainly take a moment to do that right now and so for me all that means is filling in my stripes with my color that's all that is so I'll give you guys a moment to do that um, I've decided to just fill it in back and forth but I can also go up and down if that's easier and I want you guys to think about how you're filling in these lines I don't want you guys to feel like you're too stuck stuck between the lines we don't want to be stuck if you happen to go outside the lines a little bit then embrace it this is an abstract piece of art go for it it is absolutely okay to cross lines in case you guys are wondering what's flapping underneath this this is just a little bit of a blind contour drawing so that was for another class that I did in case you're like what is that under there <laughs> blind contour drawing which leads me to my next point actually something I wanted to tell everybody here um, in case you didn't know which a lot of people don't um, no matter what level of artist you are anywhere from beginner all the way to professional you're always going to have bad art those professional artists they always had to start somewhere and even in their professional work they're always going to create art that they're not proud of and that's absolutely okay it's natural it's normal um, it's all about the process of art making that's what's important just to get it all out there because we need this kind of release and relaxation so I think we can kind of take a break from the flowers just for a minute to sort of let it digest in our heads for a little bit if that makes sense <laughs> um, we can go ahead and jump down to the table now so you know just so our, our vase doesn't really look like it's um, it's floating in midair so with the table I'll give you a choice you can you can use that that peach color if you wanted to start off lighter um, or you can just jump right into it into uh, using a brown color I have this one it's more like an ochre color but please if you have another color in mind you'd like to your table to be that color please use that color and when I make the table I'm going to be starting off with my um, the back of my table here I like to call lines like this the the horizon line it's not really a horizon technically but um, it sort of gives you a ground it gives you like your eye sort of starts to understand what's going on in the picture so I'm gonna make a line back here and then a line back here but I want to leave some space for the corner so you'll if you haven't noticed by now I like to point a lot in my picture and I point because I want to get a sense for how much space I have in the picture so just a little tip so you're trying you know in case you're wondering what I'm doing um, I'm going to do this line here so my table technically is going behind back here 
So that's generally where I want my line to be. So here, here, leaving some space for that corner there. Ta-da! And then to give it a little perspective, I've got this line jutting downwards. It's jutting towards the corner, actually. If you want to make it a goal to touch the corner there, you can do that. Just always point your finger to where you want it to go, if you're able to point. Point your finger like that. I'm not going to worry too much about these scribbles just yet. I actually wanted to do the background scribbles first. Um, I'm also going to take a moment right now to, maybe I'll do that later. No, I can do that now. Um, I was going to say outline the vase right now. Um, I don't know if anybody here has other colors for the, for their vase. Like if you're doing another color for your vase, um, you can go ahead and use that color, whatever color you're going to use to outline it. You can use it now. Um, we can also get a little bit of a sense for the scribbles that you see here. And I'm going to be using the same brown that I use for the table back here. It's just the same brown. Um, I honestly don't know why I decided to do that color. Um, yeah, I feel, I feel like it makes sense here anyway. So I'll go ahead and start by outlining it. If you're like me, you may have a petal or two in the way. Um, I'm not going to outline the petal. I'm going to jump around the petal like that. In this picture, I also um, outlined the, well, uh, well, actually, I put a line on the bottom of the, uh, the stripes here. Put a line on the bottom. If you feel like you might like it better with a line at the top, just to make it even, you can certainly put that there. Completely up to you what you want to do with that. Oh, I'm not going too fast. If I am, please let me know, okay? I tend to uh, tend to go a little too fast sometimes, so please just tell me. <laughs> Hold on a second, it's okay. Now, my favorite part. I'm gonna give you guys a little taste of what we'll be doing throughout the background. Um, we're gonna be scribbling. That is absolutely one of my favorite things to do really no matter what media I'm using. So you'll get a little taste of that through here. Um, I like to think of scribbling kind of as your playful signature. It's just, it's like a signature almost, but it's more playful than that, way more playful than that. So I'll start with the big section. That's what I wanna do, start with the big section. I'm just gonna pretend I'm putting in a signature. Scribble, scribble. Perhaps couple more scribbles there. And I, I didn't, if you guys caught that, I don't know if you caught that, but I didn't actually reach all the way to the end, so I just put a little thing there. Scribble, scribble again. Again, we are putting in a few of those abstract elements. That's just kind of what makes it the impressionistic type of picture that it is. What in the world? Uh-oh, looks like my internet connection on my computer is gone. But you guys, Alexa, you can hear me on my phone, right? Yeah, that's where the audio is coming from. You're good. Okay, good, okay. Yeah, my internet. Anyway, hopefully it'll come back up. So, um, I have my scribbles here. Um, I really wanted you guys to just get a taste of the, the kinds of, of drawings that we'll be doing, the types of mark making we'll be doing. Oh, awesome, I'm back online. Okay. Okay, so now that we've had a little bit of a break from the craziness that is up here, um, we can start to 
uh, color in our flowers. Um, I am going to jump back to that same light. Well, actually, I take that back. Let's actually do the middle of our flowers next. Really, all I want to do right now with the middle is just outline them because I want us to have a sense of um, of direction, especially if you're a little bit lost with all these lines in here. So we'll just sort of make those circles to give ourselves some direction. Oh, and I think I forgot to mention earlier that some of you guys or all of you guys should have received some of these kinds of um, hand grips too if you got the, if you, um, got the, the adaptive aids. So you should have had some of these as well. I love these things. They're just really like fluffy. <laughs> um, so anyway, I will be using this to just outline the middle. I'm going right on top of that yellow, that lemony yellow color, right on top. This is also my chance to cover up that, uh, that smaller circle or that, yeah, that small circle right there. This is basically just our way of, of grounding our eyes. And just so you guys know, I'm also going to um, go and use my outline color to, to bring out some of my petals. Well, all of my petals, really. I'm going to use this outline color, which was brown, actually. It was the same brown that I used for uh, out here. I'm actually going to outline my petals in this color. That's what that is. So I'm going to do that before I go in and color all of my um, my petals. If you're using, if you're doing a different color other than um, other than the yellow, then I'll just sort of leave it up to you to decide what color to outline it with. So it really just depends on you, whatever you're using. Whatever outline color you're doing, go ahead and go over each and every petal like that. Might take some time, so that's absolutely okay. Take your time with it though, okay? I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to outline everything because you might have to... Uh, sort of try to find your petals again. So once again, for me, it was that same color that I used for the table, that ochre color. That's the, the lid color for it. Do I have any questions? Hannah, I actually have a question. Um, yeah. Can you explain what ochre is? Yes. Thank you for asking that. Um, ochre is sort of like a warm brown color. It's um, kind of like kind of like a honey mustard color, actually. I'm trying to think of something to relate it to. Um, yeah, if you think of honey mustard, it's kind of like that golden brown color. Not as light as sand, but darker than sand. Does that make sense? Well, you just made it sound delicious, so I would say it makes good sense. <laughs> good. Okay, good. I might be a little hungry. There we go. Now, I would like to invite really anybody. Um, and Hannah, if... we actually have a question that just came in. Why did we start out with the lighter color instead of just going directly to the dark one? Oh, yes. Um, I wanted it to make a little bit more sense when we were actually um, going in and before actually coloring it in, actually. I wanted it to make a little bit more sense. Um, I wanted you to get a chance to practice creating those flowers because um, how I mentioned earlier about how it's it's a lot easier to cover up your lines if it's a lighter color. 
It's the same thing with the flowers. So you've had a chance to create so many petals by this point, and you can cover up your mistakes with a darker color. So if you don't like a certain petal shape, um, it can go away um, after you, like if you put the, the darker color on top of the lighter color. Does that make sense? Does that make I think sense? so. Okay, good, yeah. So that's why, in case you're wondering. Just wanted to give plenty of opportunities for practice. Even though I'm sure you guys are petal experts by now. Had to think about what I'm doing there. Now, after we um, outline all of them, we can actually start to color them in. There we go. Now, I did not, um, I did not uh, perfectly outline any of these petals, really. My hand already got used to the motion of doing the petals, so I was able to go a little bit faster with them, with every single one of them. So honestly, anytime you're ready, you can color them in using your preferred color. And for this, we're going to go right on top of all of our lines. They may smudge just a little bit, like, but they should barely smudge. It should be hardly anything. Go in there. I'm just going to pretend that there's really no lines there because I don't want to get um, too, too distracted with... Um, trying to be perfect inside every single section. All we want to do is color. And if you're having a hard time locating some of the petals, it's like maybe it's a little bit um, too busy somewhere, um, it helps me to take a look at where the circle is and then color in from there. That way I'm not filling, like coloring in some gaps. Like this is a gap right there. So just sort of use the middle of the flower as your, your marker. So maybe in a moment or so, I would actually love to invite um, just a couple people to, if you want to share your work, um, you're more than welcome to share your work and just kind of show everyone what your progress is so far. We'll just take a few minutes to I'd be wonderful. Do that. Yeah. Do we have any volunteers? Feel free to any... turn your camera on. Let us see. Yeah, anybody. Especially if you have other colors, too. Oh, yeah, oh, a lot of people. God. Nice. Oh, there's so many different oh, colors. Oh, my gosh. What in the world? <laughs> Party Monster, you're like way out there. I love it. Oh, my, oh gosh. my gosh. Hi, you can yes. share this too. Yeah, Tori, you're more <gasps> than welcome. Just hold it up. Oh, my gosh. How cool is that? You guys told, like, when I said creative freedoms, you guys went for it. Oh my gosh, Heather, I'm loving those colors. Angelica, I love that too. Oh my gosh. I love Judy. everyone's interpretation of this. I love it so Seriously. much. Seriously. Seriously, you guys are so good at this. Elizabeth, can I see? Oh, there we go. I'm loving those. You guys are really awesome. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much for showing. I saw the blue vase there. That was awesome. That was really pretty, seriously. Yeah, thank you guys so much for sharing that. That was beautiful. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh my gosh. We're so proud of you all. I know. <laughs> I know. You guys are awesome. <laughs> okay. Now I feel like 
like I have some uh, I have some coloring to do because you guys are way further along than I am. <laughs> and just so you guys know, we will be coloring in the middle of the flower next. So for me, I'm using that that darker, that chocolatey color brown. Right on top of everyone. Oh, cool, Wendy. I love it. Oh, Wendy, so cool. <gasps> oh, Terry and Matt. I see a little bit of the vase. I love the blue vase. Oh, I'm my loving gosh. That. Matt's vase is so cool. Seriously. The textures are way cool. Seriously, so cool. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I got some scribbles to make. Getting there. Oh, there we go. Y'all took off the the blurriness. Cool. Oh, that's so pretty. cool. That's so pretty. Awesome. Hey, Hannah. Yeah. It's me, Jennifer. Hey, Dan Jennifer. I, Dan and I kind of missed the the drawing of the petals, so we made like really simplistic petals. Will you show me one quick time just how to do it again? Yeah, of course. Um, okay, now, thank you. Of course. Now, I can draw an extra little flower right here. Oh, Karen! So. That was great! <laughs> Karen, how awesome! I love that you have your uh, pad, I'm your tablet. A, I'm having a technical problem. I can't change the colors anymore. Uh -oh. I don't know well, why. Huh, weird. So I, have to, I have to work with what's stuck there. You know, I only use this when I go to your class. <laughs> so it's been a while. It started out with all these colors, and now it's like, where'd they go? Come back. Oh, man. The palette has been decided for you, Karen. I hope you find them. <laughs> now, Jennifer, here, I'll draw another flower here. You draw the middle first, and I'm using my lightest color because it gives okay. us good practice. So draw in my middle. And the petals, I'm going to start on the top. Draw a nice little round petal there. Now mine, it, it fans out and it comes to a point. I don't know if that's what you meant when you... Yes. Oh, yes. okay, okay. Gotcha, yeah. it Like I start really wide at the base there, and then it comes to a point. It's... Almost like a water droplet, actually, if you want to think about it that way, almost. Okay. Like a water droplet. And then two sides, just like that, always going. Um, if I start on one side, I jump to the opposite end. Okay. And then also overlap if you have gaps to fill. So there's a gap there. there I would consider this a gap because I'd like to make it even. And then here as well. And then if you have a good grasp on what you're doing, you can go ahead and just um, go right in and outline everything and then color it in. Whoops. You know, Hannah, I, one of the things I love is that you created the side-by-side, -side, what we're actually doing, and what you're doing looks different. So I wonder if people went back and looked at the recording, you know, if they just want to be artistic, they could do something completely different because I saw different flower patterns. You can do different colors. So that's just real encouraging. That's actually a great idea. Like if you wanted to do a different version of this, you definitely can. And you'll, you'll be hearing the same exact words coming out of my mouth and it could still look different from, from the first time you did it. Um, that's actually one of my very favorite things about teaching a class it's that everybody hears the same instructions, but it just turns out different depending on the person and depending on your handwriting, too. It's what I love about this kind of stuff. Yay. All right, guys. I think we are on a roll now. Um, you guys are doing so great with everything. Um, I am going to break down the background now. So the background, it, it consists of scribbles, okay? I mentioned earlier, it's one of my favorite things to do. I love scribbling, and so that's exactly how we're gonna fill in all of this background back here. So it might seem like 
a huge amount of space to fill, but if you break it down into easy to manage bite-sized pieces, it becomes not so difficult. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I mentioned already that we were going to do the middle of the flowers. Let's actually do the middle of the flowers. <laughs> Let's do that first. Let's do the middle of the flowers. And then also after that, um, I, once again, we're skipping the background because I told you goldfish memory. <laughs> um, we're going to do the leaves as well. So because we're going to need to have the leaves in there before we fill in the background. So um, for the middle, um, for my sunflowers, it's actually that chocolatey brown, the darkest brown. So um, you'll notice here if I put this closer to the camera. Can you guys see that okay? Um, the middle consists of a lot of smaller tick marks. So they're, they're just little, just little marks, small marks that I created starting from the outside. So I'm even going to overlap and for this part um, I should mention that it might be helpful if you have enough space to turn your your picture around although I, I know I mentioned um, taping your page to the um, to your table as well so you might have to adjust yourself a little bit if that's the case but for some people it might help to just turn it around and do these tiny little tick marks all the way around Hey, Hannah, this is Party Monster. I'm going to take off for another party, but I want to thank everyone for the great fun session. Yes, thank you for joining us, Party Monster. I saw Thanks, that you. Thanks, Party Monster. You oh, finished. my gosh. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. I love it. Love and just it. so everybody knows and can, we actually have an art gallery for all the art that people do in our community. And I'll give you a, uh, uh, we'll send it out in the follow-up email. But if you would like yours to be featured, please send it to us so we can put it on the website. But we love it. Party Monster, you did so awesome. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yes. yes thank you, thanks. everyone. Have a great night. Good to meet you. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, that's really awesome. I love it. Um, so I'm going to do just these little tick marks. And like I said, they're going to start on. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. I spilled my tea. <laughs> Here's a little party foul there. I spilled all my tea on my uh, picture. Now everyone go get drinks and spill it on your drop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's a yes. new artistic technique. <laughs> you know? It's a I new technique. It it, uh, it smells wonderful. It's my green tea. It enhances the senses. It's no longer 2D. It's multidimensional now with smell. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is uh exactly. This is now the future of what art will look like. Welp. That's okay. Uh, so I'm actually going to let that dry and I'll, uh, I'll redo it later. So don't worry about that. So I still have my little middle section here. So this might be a little bit tedious for some people. I know that it's definitely tedious for myself because I'm the kind of person that just wants to go fast, fast, fast and get it all done rather quickly. But really, I'm just going all the way around and making all those tick marks um, actually pointing towards the center. They're actually just kind of pointing inward. Some of them might look like they're kind of blending in a little bit. Because that's just how the, the, the mark making works, I guess. But it'll get there. Just do row after row after row of little marks. What and is it okay if I only did seven flowers? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I did mention earlier that, uh, to not count them. So <laughs> I don't even know what, how many flowers I did. What color are you marking the marks? Yes, the these are chocolatey brown. Oh, okay. I missed yeah. that instruction. Ah, no, you're good. You're good. So chocolatey brown, and I'm starting on the 
the outside of that, that inner circle. And I'm even overlapping it just a little bit just to make that texture. And I'm creating one row at a time with all of my tick marks um, pointing towards the center. I'm not going to fight you for it, baby. There you go. Hi, Lucinda. Okay. So I'll give you guys a chance to do that. For me, I'm going to see how much of this I can redraw. Just a little bit, just so you guys can see some of it. So after this, I'll be um, putting in some leaves and also filling in some of these gaps as well, which we're going to be scribbling. I'm going to be scribbling a lot of that. There we go. Not too bad. That wasn't too bad. All right. So as far as placement of leaves are concerned, um, I am, I'm just going to pick just some spots in which I can draw a leaf sticking out. And then in the middle, in between, I'll go in and I'll scribble some green. Now, in the original, I used two types of green. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I used three types because my, my pack actually came with, came with three types of green. Um, start off with your lightest greens. Um, so it's basically going to be a football shape. Oh. I'm just going to pick a few spots. Um, perhaps you can pick some spots where there's a lot of space. Um, that could be a good starting point for you. So for here, it's kind of really nice actually to be able to squeeze a, a leaf in here, perhaps squeeze a leaf over on this side. There's one that's pointing down in this original picture, and I love that guy right there. So I'm just going to draw. You can even fill them in. You can fill them in right now. Um, I suggest filling them in quickly. And these leaves, at least right now, some of them may look like they are um, floating in space. I can squeeze one in up here. Just gonna fill them in rather quickly. Didn't have to be too many. You can squeeze in a tiny leaf here and there. Little football shapes. And then for any of those areas that are more gaps where it's not really feasible to put too much else in there, um, you can go in and scribble some more. I guess I could have fit a, a leaf in there, but you know, I don't have to. And my reasoning behind scribbling in these little areas is that it's so dense within these spots that when you actually look at a bouquet of roses, um, there's really not much that your eye can, can make out. Um, it looks very abstract. It looks like a bunch of clutter. And so us scribbling sort of mimics that clutter a little bit. Now, once again, I'm just kind of using that light green. Um, my next green, just so you guys know, is going to be um, a middle green. So we just use the lightest. I'm going to use a middle green. And then my, the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the darkest green. So a dark green. Light, middle, dark. I'm going to grab those colors now. So for me, it's kind of that, uh, that foresty green in there. And let me, I want you to see this up close. Right there. So I, I did not completely cover all of my, my light greens, but 
a really good portion of it is scribbled on top of that light green. So if you'd like somewhere to start at least, you can start at the bottom perhaps, scribble some there, perhaps partially cover it, perhaps halfway cover it, perhaps if you're looking for where to mark within these little gaps here. Just a few scribbles here and there. That would do the trick. If you wanted to outline your leaves, you can certainly do that. Um, in fact, I think I actually did. I didn't quite see it, but I did outline my, my leaves in the original picture. I'm just now noticing that. going to put some lines in there. Now that I've been able to uh, put some greenery in these little in-between spots, I've actually noticed that I missed a spot in my petals. There you go. Got it. Now, Hopefully that's given you enough chance to put leaves in. Um, now that we have anything, we have everything that's sort of sticking out into the background. So now we can go ahead and create the background. There we go. I just had to put some of my, uh, my vase back in. All right, so my background color. Um, I chose to use this particular teal because it really makes the, the flowers pop and it really makes the flowers stand out. That was my reasoning. Um, I also knew that I had like a darker, more sapphire blue in my package. Um, so I knew that that would fit really nicely as a shadow for behind the vase. That's why I chose that. You're more than welcome to choose any color for the background that you want as well. Um, my recommendation would be any two colors, any colors in which you have a light color and a dark color. So for me, of course, that's that teal and that's the, the dark sapphire blue. Um, if you have the 20 piece, I know some people got the 20 piece marker set, some people got the 50 piece, depending on how many people are in the room with you. Um, some of you guys have more options than I do. So for me, I'm gonna take those colors out now, have them aside. Um, I'm gonna start with my main color. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm just going to break it down into easy to manage scribbles. So for me, the easy part was going right on the side here and then also going here inside these uh, little gaps and spaces around the, um, around the vase and around the flowers. But I want you guys to start wherever is more comfortable for you. So if, it's that, if that's on the right side, then start there. If that's on the left side, then you start there. So I'm literally scribbling. And you'll get the hang of it too. The main idea is to turn these into bite-sized um, things that we can color. For the most part, my scribbles are going up and down you know, with exceptions, of course. I'm not really extending my reach. When it comes to putting them up there, like but up here, I'm not perfect with it. And in fact, without even thinking about it, my uh, hands or I'm sorry, my mark making is covering 
and overlapping some of the um, some of the petals but that's kind of the beauty about this kind of mark making it's not supposed to be perfect at all and to be quite honest whenever I was first diagnosed and first you know trying to figure out um, what direction I could take what direction I was capable of taking with my art making I had to really um, really leap to do this kind of thing like I was very rigid with my art making and I had to do everything perfectly because that's just how, who I was but MS just sort of turns you into somebody else um, and so my art had to reflect that and so scribbling was just sort of something that was naturally took place there we go make everything easier for you let the tools work for you i feel like that's a helpful mantra for me at least let the tools work for you so take your time with that background Oh good, I'm glad you're having fun, Wendy. Hooray. So the um, I'll go ahead and explain that shadow that you see back here. So this shadow, I had like I mentioned before, I used the sapphire blue for this one. Um, it's honestly even more loosely put in there even more than than the the rest of the background um, and I had to take a look at um, at the flowers themselves and sort of think about where my light is like sometimes I literally have to like pretend that my hand is like a sun a little mini sun and just sort of think about where the light's gonna hit on the picture and then it, and then where the, the shadow is going to hit afterwards. So I feel like the sun, the little mini sun or like the lamp is like right about here. So the shadow is going to be right about down here. So without further ado, my scribbles are going to basically be going in the same direction, but it's not nearly as uh, tight of an area. Just kind of think about where your scribbling is going to be but not too hard don't think too hard about it you just have a few of these scribbles to squeeze in back here just to get a small sense of space there but honestly i don't even need to go up here you might be a little bit different but that's okay and then i have a little bit of that same sapphire blue right in the corner here just to really push this area back. And I should also mention that I also have um, some maroon in there too. But we'll put that in later. We're actually almost finished with this, you guys. I am super proud of everybody for for joining us today just for being here i know it takes a lot to carve out time in your day um, especially if it's time for yourself um, i know how difficult that is especially if you have a very busy life a very busy schedule um, especially if you have kids to feed too um, so just thank you for being here I'm glad you're here. I'm really happy. And also, Hannah, the fact that so many people, this is their first time taking a class like this. True. That's just so brave to try something new. Mm -hmm. I And the fact that so many people felt comfortable sharing is just, that's amazing to me. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Especially since uh, if this is your first time taking on a Van Gogh style impressionist drawing, that's like <laughs> fantastic. So thank you for being here. Um, I will go ahead and show you how to make all of this texture on the desk now. 
Um, and I wanted to get this in there before I get the, um, the, the maroon, before I put that maroon, because the same maroon that you see in this little section here, that's what is outlining the right side and the bottom of the vase. So let's get the rest of this texture in here first. Um, so um, I'm going to go back to that same honey mustard slash ochre color that I was using before. Um, this is the same color I used to outline my um, desk. I don't know if I could find it, that'd be great. I'm telling you, like, sometimes I feel like there's a ghost in my room. It's like I have two of these ochre markers, okay, from two different sets. They're both gone. Oh, well, well, so you guys should know that I'm in, I intended on using the ochre color, but since I can't find it, I'm actually going to use just the, the other brown color, the chocolate brown color, but you guys use that ochre if that's what you were going for. So I'm going to start with these um, horizon lines or rather these um, horizontal lines um, back here. And then I'll just sort of add a few lines going along this side here. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the easy ones from my longest to the shortest. They just get a little bit shorter every time you go downward a little bit. If it's easier for you, you can actually do these, this line first. It, it really doesn't matter what the order of operations. So, but just because I'm doing horizontal lines, I'm just gonna jump to the other side. And these lines here are mostly equal. I made these kind of fast. And I would highly encourage you guys to make these lines kind of fast as well. Scraping all the way down. Um, until you get to the bottom of the vase. That bottom of the vase you're basically going to have the same kinds of lines, but they're going to extend from the bottom of the vase. So they're going to extend, and you're just going to kind of scribble outward and downward a little bit. Like that. And then once again, going to follow this line. And honestly, this line here really just serves the purpose of cleaning up this area here because you can see that some of my scribbles they, they made it past the the table line here so it just kind of helps to clean it up a little bit same thing with up here you can always you can add more if you want to All right. Now, um, I also had put some of this, uh, the same background color. I actually put it inside the table. You can see a few of these lines here, a few of these lines here. Um, I'll be honest, I had to go a little bit outside of my comfort zone because when I made that original picture, I, I was originally thinking, okay, it's missing something. What is it missing? I didn't know what it was missing. So I just sort of put the teal onto the table, hoping it would do something. And it ended up working well. So <laughs> that's why I put the teal, that's why I put the background color into the table. Really no particular rhyme or reason, just to clean it up a little bit. So I did get very close to the uh, the vase so if you need to take your time with that you can definitely take your time with it put it back there just a little bit and then just a few like a couple honestly lines way back here and way on the side there
So it kind of looks like the last thing that we'll be doing is putting in that maroon color. So for me, that maroon color is gonna be this one. Is. So if you're just now opening up your package of markers, um, it's going to be the one at the very left side, the very end of it, this maroon color. Now, if you thought I hardly used any of that sapphire color, well, I actually used even less of this, uh, this maroon color. You can see just a little bit right on the side there. A little bit there. I outlined the side of the vase and then the bottom of the vase as well. And I even extended it just a little bit and right here. So I can start to outline the vase first because that seems like the easiest thing to do. And I'm using the thicker portion of the marker. So I use that thicker portion and then I can go underneath the vase and scrape it outward like that. It's just an extra, um, just an extra little uh, shadow. And then in the back here, scribble a little back there, maybe a little back there if, you're, if you feel like it needs it. And then the last spot for the maroon down here. even less of that and then I know I said that was probably the last thing but actually the fallen petals are the last thing so these right here and these are honestly really just space fillers um, I'm putting tiny or I guess not tiny but smaller scribbles just to represent um, falling petals that's all. Um, go back to your petal color. So for me, it's that yellow. And scribble tiny little, very abstract petal shapes. Petals, they don't really fall in any particular order. And I'm even putting them right on top of um, these shadow lines back here. I'm just gonna pretend in my head that those are that the shadows are right on top of them. And if you want to sign your work, now would be the time to do it. You can honestly use any of your colors. Um, I personally like to have a more subtle signature. I don't like for my signatures to really stand out too much. So for me, I'm probably just going to stick with this. My petal color. But uh, that was the last step. If anyone would like to get on camera and show their work for the last time, you're more than welcome to do so now. Just sort of take your, uh, turn your camera on again and hold it up. And Hannah, it won't be the last time if they submit it to the art gallery because that's permanent. And plus you can tell your friends that my artwork is in a gallery and you would be telling the truth. You would be absolutely <laughs> telling the truth. Like we would love to um, get your submissions. We would love to be able to put it up there. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. You guys are oh so amazing i love it all honestly like the amount of creativity that i'm seeing is so amazing <laughs> i'm loving those uh purple backgrounds too wow there's so much oh detail in gosh. yours gary that's amazing oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh and the colors Everybody. Seriously. Oh, I'm so like proud we're, of you all. We're honestly, like, we're honestly not just saying this. Like, this is no. really fantastic. Um, you guys took the time to create a Van Gogh post-impressionistic drawing. Like, that's something. <laughs>
that's no small feat. You guys did so amazing on all of this. And I'm really seriously so proud of you guys. Um, I'm loving all of these. Yes. I can't oh my thank gosh. you enough. Yes, I cannot thank you guys enough for being here. Enough for showing us your amazing talents. I hope you learned something. <laughs> Terry, Terry and Matt, do you have something to say? Yeah. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Are you what? Happy? There you Just are. Just say hi. <laughs> <laughs> so good seeing both of you guys. I've also you too, you Hannah. Before. Thank I'm you so too. much for, for letting us know. We had so much fun. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, Kim. I see yours too. I love it. Hannah. Thank you. I, Hannah. Hannah. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to know, Hannah. I cannot. I cannot sign my name. I have to use my left <laughs> hand because my right hand doesn't work. I cannot even sign my name or write a note. Oh my goodness. I mean, huh. that's like. It's just that's amazing. It's only when I do this that I can. <laughs> Like what and and all the malfunction. I couldn't get the pens to work, so the colors came up with different pens. So I was like, "All right, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> just, do it. just go for it." Yeah. So Hannah, oh. we're getting so many questions because people want to do it again, and we do too. Yeah. We are doing this again. In we fact, there's going to be three more, at least oh. three more. <laughs> and Once a uh, month. Hannah, uh, I think if we can give this group a little preview. I think we're doing acrylics next month. Ooh. Yes, we're doing acrylics next month. So I decided to turn it into a mostly classical art project. I don't have anything to show you right now, but just know we're going to be using toothbrushes as our as oh. our paintbrush. Because <laughs> I thought, you know what? Why not? Let's use a paintbrush. Um, and let's see what we can do with mixing our acrylic or our, 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 um, mixing our uh, colors together that way. Um, and let's just see what we can do with it. So there's your little preview. <laughs> Thank you. This was so fun. Thank, Thank you, you, Debbie. So yes, yes. And to Thank answer your question, here. we will also give you exclusive. <laughs> the next class is July 21st. Okay. And um, we do have a form that you can sign up on if you're interested. Are you interested? So we are going to be in touch with you guys because we're going to send out an email to kind of get some feedback from you. What can we improve? What can we do better? And of course, we're also going to let you know about our art gallery and feel free to send them to either Hannah or I. We will get them on there because we're so proud. I've been tearing up, Hannah. I'm so <laughs> proud. It's like I, I became a parent overnight and I have so many children I'm proud of. <laughs> Right? <laughs> uh, Kim, it's July 21st. Yes. July 21st. I'm going to put that in the chat. July. I'm so proud of you that you can get this out of us. Yes. <laughs> you guys did awesome. It's Seriously. Magic. You guys did amazing. Kim like, is already came... getting her, the camera out, taking a picture. Kim knows the deal. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys so much um, for everything. Um, I cannot wait. Sign up for the next class. We'd love to see you there. Um, actually, one of the things I'm curious about is if we need to do it a little bit earlier, and that's one of the a preview of one of the questions I'm going to ask. So maybe a different time. Don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. That's yes, fine. Wendy, you can come. Yes. <laughs> no, you're not limited to one. This is for everybody. Come back. This is, yes, we love it. We'd love to see you again. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you. Hey, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. You guys have fantastic. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night.